Trying to cut down on smoking? Switch to SK Quality Franks. All meat, no filler. Hickory smoked. Delicious barbecued. I'm down to a pack a day. You ever notice the way nobody ever says anything in elevators? Face the front of the car, please. <laughs> you know why he says that? Habit. We're all creatures of habit. Food, for instance. What are we all going home to tonight? Spaghetti and meatballs, right? Potatoes, lots of starch. Face the front. How of the about a little variety once a week? Some light oriental dish, like, like chow mein. Delicious. Filling, but not too heavy. Face the front. Face the issue. Would it hurt any one of us to try a little chow mein tonight? Break the American food habit. Probably some tasty canned chow mein you could pick up at your grocer's. Of course, it's up to you. <laughs> Don't let me influence you. I got no axe to grind. <laughs> Takes all kinds, huh? I warn you in advance, I'm not going to like your prune. I see. And why do you say that? I say that for a very simple reason. I don't like prunes. Mm -hmm. And why? For one thing, prunes are wrinkled, and I don't like wrinkled fruit. You don't? No, I don't like wrinkled fruit at all. And then there's the matter of the pits. Disgusting. Yes. Well, what do you do with a prune pit once it's in your mouth? There's no way of getting rid of a prune pit gracefully. I agree. That's why Sunsweet has developed this brand new pitted prune. You see? No pits. What do you mean, no pits? I mean no pits. Go ahead, try one. Oh, well, yes. May as well get it over. No pits. No pits. How do they do that? They do it. Well, they're very sweet and moist. Yes. Has Sunsweet managed to change your mind with their brand new pitted prune? Possibly. They're still rather badly wrinkled, you know. Today, the pits. Tomorrow, the wrinkles. Sunsweet marches on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this commercial is going to use subliminal... Subliminal... Subliminal advertising. That means you will never see or hear the name of the product. Oh, it'll be there on the screen, all right, but the naked eye cannot detect it. This way you sit back, relax, and enjoy me as I tell you this rather funny story. It seems that these three men decided to take a trip. And... The second guy goes back to the dry cleaner says... Opens the little door, goes. Ip, 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 ip. So the third guy says, Yeah, but you better bring back the hangers. <laughs> you, Harry. For a minute there, you startled me. I got some pizza. Pizza? Harry, I don't have time to make pizza. Did I say anything about making pizza? It's frozen. See? Gino's. Gino's? I didn't know they made a frozen pizza. It's right there in the freezer section. You think Gino's wouldn't make a frozen pizza that bakes in ten minutes for people in a hurry? Oh, Harry, be tender. Of course it'll be tender. I'm going to put it in the oven right now. I hope you do, Harry. It's getting pretty cold against my back. According to your resume, you're a witch doctor? That's right, I'm a witch doctor. Well, actually, we don't have too many openings for which... Well, I saw this uh, product, this product Why don't you just put your spear here against the... Whoa. Thanks. Anyhow, I saw these little bitty Gino's pizzas in the market. That's our snack tray. Yeah, well, I thought there'd be a lot of work for me, you know, shrinking the pizzas. Shrinking? Uh, no, actually, we make them small to begin with. No kidding. That's right. We just 
stamp out the little circles of crust, cover with cheese, sausage, pepperoni. You just pop them in the oven. Ten minutes later, you have 15 little pizza snacks on a tray. You wouldn't consider shrinking the big Gino's pizzas down? No, we have machinery that... Just let me leave you in my car. Um, I'm sorry. Well, just let me give you an idea how I work. Don't do that. You are looking at Mr. Ray Bradbury, distinguished science fiction author of Fahrenheit 451 and the Martian Chronicles, who has said, by the year 2001, man will travel about in pneumatic people tubes, his television wall to wall, and most incredible of all, his sunsweet pitted prunes carried in tiny mini packs. Hold it. What's going on here? Oh, uh, pardon me? I never mentioned prunes in any of my stories. Oh, you didn't? No, never. I'm sorry to be so candid. Uh, no, they're not candid, <clears throat> but pretty sweet all the same. The prune of tomorrow, available now. They're still rather badly wrinkled, though. Sunsweet's wrinkle technicians will one day conquer that, too. Sunsweet marches on. I never mentioned prunes in any of my stories. What are these people trying to pull? Now, from banquet comes... <laughs> what is it, Cynthia? What is it? Giblet gravy and sliced turkey. Yes, giblet gravy and sliced turkey, together in the most significant frozen dish of our time, Buffet Supper. Winner of three Banquet Academy Awards, Best Sliced Turkey. Best performance by a giblet gravy in a supporting role. Best performance by a housewife. I just put it in the oven, and by and by it was done. And I had a delicious buffet supper. Oh, yes, I did. Slices of turkey, all covered with gravy and little bitty giblets. Do you? From the same producers who brought you Beef Stew, Salisbury Steak with Gravy. And the unforgettable chicken and dumplings comes the outstanding banquet production of the 20th century. Giblet gravy and sliced turkey. Color by Paprika. Now appearing citywide in a frozen food section near you. Have a pizza, pizza, pizza roll. 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 I'd like to talk to you about that music you're using. That's funny. I've been meaning to speak to you people about the same thing. Have a pizza roll, Kimasabi. Look for Gino's pizza rolls and serve this new order. Just take them out of the freezer, pop them in the oven for ten minutes. That's it. Who was that masked man, anyhow? I don't know. But I wanted to thank him. We asked Mr. Lowell Feimster of Darien, Connecticut, to make the Jacobson sheep test. One half of his lawn has been eaten by a sheep. The other half cut with a Jacobson power mower. Is that correct? That is correct. What model did you choose to mow your lawn? I sent over the Jacobson tractor, but it's really for a larger lawn. Besides, it scared the sheep. Well, then, which model? I just model used it? his four-blade rotary job with the electric key start. Terrific. How long did it take the sheep to eat that half of your lawn? Well, he's still eating. I'd say he's been working on it now for about six weeks. He's neat, but he's not too fast. And how long for the Jacobson mower to cut this half? Twelve minutes. Proof positive that the Jacobson mower is faster than sheep. On the other hand, you can't knit a pullover sweater from a lawnmower. Yes. My wife... What are your plans for the sheep now that... Uh, have you thought of a barbecue? Well, yes, we've thought of that, but, uh, you know, it'll be sort of like eating your gardener. Jacobson. Faster than sheep. So, while I was in Florida, you really picked the name for our new candy bar, huh? The computer picked it, really. Yeah, what is it? I fed in the information how it's just like the Clark bar inside, except that yeah. instead of the chocolatey coating, it's got yeah. the toasted coconut yeah, But thing. what name did the computer pick? <clears throat> Zagnut. Zagnut? Zagnut. That is, without a doubt, the lousiest name for a candy bar I have ever heard. What's this? You actually printed a little label saying Zagnut and wrapped it around this candy bar? The fact is, we printed a number of little labels and wrapped them around How them. many labels? Oh, approximately. How many bars? Fifteen, twenty million. Yeah. 
Uh huh. Well, that's not such a bad name. Thus was Zagnut, sister ship of the Clark Bar, born. As you crunch into one, remember, a Zagnut by any other name would be a good thing. More coffee, Tom? No, thanks, dear. Try one of these Gino's pizza rolls, Brad. They're great. Okay. It's a nice party, Mrs. Clark. I see your husband didn't like your coffee. I beg your pardon? I'm Mrs. Johnson. You should try my coffee. <sighs> Look, I don't know who you are or how you got into my house, but you take your coffee and leave, okay? What's that? Beats me. Do you like the pizza rolls? Wild. They taste like cheeseburgers. Mm. And these taste like chili burgers, and then over here I have uh, ham and cheese. You seem to have everything, Mrs. Clark. Ever think you had bad breath, too? No, but you do. Nice thing about these pizza rolls, you just take them out of the freezer and pop them into the oven. For Please, you. Clark, start wearing cleaner blouses. Ah! Ah! I'll give you 30 seconds to take your blouse and get out of my house. Another Gino's pizza roll. This is a wild party. In this neighborhood, we get all the nuts. <laughs> Boy, am I hungry. What kind of soup is that? Make way for the great American soup. Can you give me that again? Up at the Ritz, they pass the word to 42nd Street. Make way for the great American soup. Hey, mister, have you tried the soup that's good enough to eat? Shake hands with the great American soup. Guide your feet on the soupy road to romance. Let's face the chicken gumbo and dance. He's got its noodles up and lights from Broadway to the loop. It's the great. Emily, why do you always have to make such a big production out of everything? He knows the frozen pizza with the crisp and tasty crust you can trust. Gino speaks with forked tongue. No, no, trust me. But Gino's pizza is brave, loyal, honest. Okay, hold it. No good. Wait a no, minute. I'm sorry. Gino's is telling the truth. I know, but the whole thing's just a little pushy. You but know? how will people know if it is the crisp and tasty crust you can trust? What? Well, they won't unless they pick up a Gino's frozen pizza at the supermarket. You Think know. they will? Beats me. Remember me? I'm the kid that had a report to on space. Then I got the new Encyclopedia Britannica. He had a report due on space, and then he got the new Encyclopedia... I think I made that abundantly clear. Um, uh, yes. Anyhow, here it is. I mean, hey, everybody knows this is the greatest encyclopedia in the world. Help me get a B plus. Why not an A? Too long. I found so much great information, I put it all in. Overkill. Hmm. The next report I did was for my science class on the human body. Look at all this great stuff. But this time I wised up and made it just the length my teacher asked for. Got a B minus. What? Just kidding. Scored an A. Uh, good. To find oh, out how you... Look at this. I always wondered where my mandibula was. Mm-hmm. To find out how you can own the new insect... We're studying the environment right now. Look at all this great stuff on ecosystems. Also, all you need to know about global warming, the greenhouse effect, the hole in the ozone. You know, all that cheerful stuff. Uh, yes. Say you so... want to check up on the Amazon rainforest and what's going on down there. We gotta save this place. For details on how you can own the new Encyclopedia Britannica... Let's have that 800 number. Excellent. Just call this number and we'll send you this free booklet. Tell them about the gift. And just for previewing Britannica in your home, we'll give you this three-volume desk reference set. This is like having your own research library at home. Mm, yes. So if you would be interested in owning the new Encyclopedia Britannica... Don't press. They see the phone number. If they want to, they'll call. I guess you're right. Trust me. 